Please, please mute yourself as you come in. Please mute yourself. Don't unmute yourself. You don't have anything to do with mic. Only the speakers can unmute themselves. If you distract us, I'm going to remove you from the Zoom platform. That means you will not be able to come back. You only go and watch us on YouTube. When I mute you, don't unmute yourself. If you have background noise, kindly mute, mute yourself. Praise the Lord. I welcome you all to today's um, training. Our speakers are already with us. In the next one or two minutes, we will start. We're trying to share the link to our members so that they can join. Thank you.
Praise the Lord. If you can hear me, please wave your hands or give me a thumbs up. Oh, thank you, Brother Francis. Yes. Yeah, welcome to the second day of our virtual ICT training. This is the first edition, and it has been a huge success. I want to appreciate everybody who joined yesterday and those who are already online and those who are here to come. It is going to be great today. We have two speakers. These two people are people I admire so much. You know, one of them handed over to me. He was the first national ICT manager of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal of Nigeria. You know how it feels when your predecessor is with you. You feel so strong and bold. So I feel so bold and strong today. You can get that from my voice. He's going to be talking to Ross on evangelization through the media. Evangelization through the media. You are aware that the whole industries have been disrupted. You know, gone are those days when we only rely on moving from one place to the other to preach Jesus Christ. In Acts of Apostles, the disciples were empowered to go from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria and to the end of the earth. It took so many centuries. But with the help of ICT, the gospel can reach millions of people within one minute. ICT is not a demonic tool. ICT is not a tool of the devil. ICT was born from what God Almighty said in Genesis. He said, fill the earth and subdue it. God made man co-creator. So through the intellect of men and women, God has been pleased to bring out technological advancement. Without technological advancement, I will not be here in Ibadan, and you are in different parts of the country, and even outside the country, and we are interacting. We thank God for the innovation that has brought about Zoom technology that has made it possible for us to have access to our beloved brother, Augustine Fariola, from the United Kingdom. I have missed him so much. He's here with us. He's going to be speaking to us on that topic. Afterwards, our beloved brother, Hilary Irobulem, he's, see these two people we have today are so jovial. If you are with them, you will laugh and laugh all through your time with them. They are charismatics. They are beloved brothers. They are youthful at heart. They are humble. They are cheerful. And today, I want to ask you to imbibe the spirit that is in this atmosphere, that spirit of cheerfulness, not of criticism, but of cheerfulness to welcome in what, from what God has given to them so that you too can become one of the ICT evangelizers or ICT evangelists. We are ICT evangelists. We do not operate separately from the leaders or CCRN. We are a team that have been put together to support, to provide support for ICT, uh, for um, evangelization in Nigeria. And um, the humble, I hope I am humble enough, I'm the current national ICT coordinator for Catholic Charismatic Renewal. My name is Emmanuel Damisa. Brother Austin, you are welcome. Please unmute yourself. Let us see your face and hear your voice. Yes, you can meet yourself now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Um, I'm so happy to be here. And um, I really thank um, the national leadership of the Renewal in Nigeria. And also thank Brother Emmanuel Damisa 
uh, who is actually, I, I refer to people like him as ancestors uh, because he, he, the first encounter we had, is, he was my senior in school uh, at the Dominican, present Dominican University, that's many years ago. So, uh, and uh, when I stepped into the school in 2003, uh, that was uh, seeing someone like him ahead of you and seeing him also uh, as a brother later years, many years afterwards, and uh, working together towards common good is something that is so exciting. And I can say a lot of things, but today we, we are not to, to have that, but to actually face a very serious thing that Brother Shongu Tedo has started yesterday, which has to do with uh, uh, this digital evangelization. Uh, what, what, I, what I think uh, everyone seems to be, seems to agree that is necessary after the post COVID era. And, uh, and uh, the, 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 the thing that Brother Emmanuel was also saying is that um, God who has created us in his own divine wisdom has already placed certain elements in us. And that's why they say that we are, we, we are created in his own image and likeness. And in order to recreate the world and in order to add value to the world and make his presence known, he has given us skills and wisdom which we can use to promote his kingdom. And that is what we are going to do. And you remember when he said that if the children of the world, if, if we, when we realize that, when he said in the scripture that if the children of the world knows how to do this particular, what about we children of light? And we know that there are a lot of ongoing conversations about social media, about internet, about computing, about all these. But to be honest with you, these are tools in the hands of Christians. These are tools and weapons by which we can be able to pro project the kingdom of God. So today, uh, my presentation, I'm going to share the screen. Uh, I implore Brother Misa to enable uh, that from his end. Um, today, the title of my presentation, which I call Digital uh, evangelization. Uh, is, this, is, this will be the first of the series. And uh, the goal of, of the, um, I still can't share. No, just a moment, I'm going okay. to make you. Okay. And the goal of the, of the presentation is actually to, to tell us about how to have a productive online encounter with members of the Renewer. And how to engage, and how to engage in one-on-one -on -one, uh, counseling and spread the gospel through the digital media, such as websites, uh, blogs, and 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 the rest. So um, I'm going to share the slides with you afterwards because um, it's something that you also need to also to have a look at and also and reflect upon and see how you would transform. Uh, this knowledge, right, into, into uh, practice or you transform it into uh, uh, something you can use to, to change lives. So uh, can you see my screen, please? Um, as, oh, you yes, are you muted. Can see your screen. Oh, very good. So as I've started before, the uh, the, the title is digital evangelization or evangelism. Um, and, and one of the major things is this, this slide, I will permit you, you can use it to, you can remove my name afterwards. Anybody can remove my name, put your name on top of it. I use it to also pass on the knowledge to, to other people in your diocese or province. And because I make it open license is my content. And as I've said that the, the goal of digital evangelism is to have a productive encounter with members of the renewer, engage in one-on-one -on -one counseling and spread the gospel through digital media. And we talk about websites, we talk about blogs, we talk about Facebook, Instagram, and online community. And when we say that spread the gospel, uh, when I was growing up, I, I'm, I've been used to, people used to ring bell round in the morning, 4, 4 a.m., they go round, you know, up and down, that's in Yoruba. 
you know, that people should repent, people should accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And most of us also do that inside bosses. My brothers and sisters, uh, as we are going home, God will help us, but let us reflect on this. But consider the outreach. How many people do you reach out to? You know, how many people have you been able to, 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 to actually spread that gospel to? What the Digital Age provided us with is an expanded outreach. And now we ask you that what can I be committed to online? That's, you can ask yourself, what can I be committed to online? You know, you, you can write it down. You can send the things to the chat room. You can send it to the chat. But I have the first two uh, responses, which I believe that it might be your own too. That online, a lot of people are saying all sorts of things. But you can devote and say, my ministry online is to defend the Catholic faith. I don't want to be sharing bad news. There are a lot of bad news in our country, Nigeria. Uh, what has happened here? Boko Haram has done this, that has done. The super hate this tribe. This tribe want to leave the country. Uh, these people are killing other people. Somebody has stolen all the money in Nigeria. That is bad news. But what we are commissioned with, with, we are messengers of good news. And then the second thing is, we bear witness to the gospel, to the gospel message. We just need to share it. And you don't know how many people that might touch. I'll just tell you, sometimes when I wake up in the morning and I just flip through my phone to see who is sharing good news this morning. And sometimes, you know, when I just meet a message, I just say like, does this person who posted this actually know that the person was speaking to me? You know, and that is one of the major things that you don't actually know that what the spirit drop in your soul in the morning and you send on your on your status or to your Facebook or to or the social media is changing life in many places. So defend then the Catholic faith and bearing witness to the gospel message. Those are the two things, and or you can share more and you can add more to it. And then the question you ask is, what are the skills that I should have as a digital evangelist? And what are the tools that I need to have? You know, the first of all, you know who you are. If you're on this platform, you're, if you're listening to, 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 to me, uh, to this talk and you are this webinar, you know who you are because um, like when I, when I was creating this uh, particular draft, what came to my mind was a song, you know, uh, we are a chosen generation born to show his excellence, you know, and all we require, you know, is it has been given to us. So when you are talking about, you know, like uh, uh, Moses, we ask, I cannot talk, you know, I cannot. So some people begin to say, I don't have a PhD. I don't have masters. I don't know computer. I don't know how to write good grammar. I don't know how to do this. That's not what is needed. It's not grammar. You know, it's not complicated skills. It's not, you know, it's what is just needed is just your ability to be able to pass on what you have received. And what are the tools that you need? And I will say, for instance, when I say you know who you are as you're on this platform, is the first of all is the intellectual formation you have received. And when I mean intellectual formation, you 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 have received baptism in the spirit, you have done live in the spirit seminar. That is the greatest. Thomas Aquinas, the live in spirit seminar is an abridged form of spiritual, 40 days spiritual exercise of Thomas Aquinas. And that is all that is required to even be, to be rooted in Christ and to have, so you, you have received all the knowledge and many other things that are just addition and augmentation. You have been attending national conferences, diocesan conferences, you attend mass daily, you read your own Bible on your own, and you listen to, to God's reflection, you attend workshops. So what, what is you want to share with others that you have not received? You have been jotting at every conferences and seminars. You have those jotters, you just drop them, just type them anytime and share it. And then you also have evangelical formation. When we talk about evangelical formation, uh, which has more to do with uh, you have Listen to people's experience. You have participated in crusade. You have what is a, this? What is basic formation that the disciples received? So you know, don't underestimate the fact that you are late in the Catholic Church. You have received the Holy Spirit, and then you have your role. And Father Catalemesa has explained. So one of the major things you have to ask yourself, because a lot of people who have been very good touching lives offline and doing a lot of things. And you tell them, brother, why don't you start sharing some of all this thing through your Facebook? And they will just 
speak ill of themselves and bring themselves down. And I just want to trash that force and to say, you know who you are. And life experiences matters. I've personally, uh, during my uh, experience for good 10 years as a CCRN web manager, I've met a lot of people online. People will tell me, as I'm telling you, this is what I'm doing, I'm not happy with myself. And that was where I had most of my one-on-one -on -one evangelism and counseling. And one of the major reasons, I will not tell you most of the things people shared. These are good charismatic members. These are good Christians, but they have some things that are, they feel that are dirty, that they cannot even mention in confession, that they cannot even mention, but they want to mention it to someone anonymously. So they just say, can I have your number? And they did not disclose themselves. This is what I'm doing. I'm so, 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 I'm brother this, I'm sister this. And sometimes tears run down from my eyes because one of the things that comes to mind is, so you can, and you begin to speak. You don't know what you are saying because it's not about you. It's about what God wants to do through you and what, so you can see the confidential side. And that's one of the major things I want to tell you that you are not just people who are pressing computer for the charismatic. You have to be spirit filled and you have to know your role with regards to digital evangelism. Now, you don't know everything. I don't know everything. These are some of the resources that I'm going to share the links with you. I'm going to share a Google document with you. One of the major things is when things arise, when people raise questions on social media, when they raise it on Facebook and uh, even on websites or whatever you want to, you can always take from here, from the Bible various version. If people turn Bible upside down, you will tell them, this is according to this edition of the Bible. These are other editions. And this is the Catholic edition. If people say this, when you, they say something concerning the doctor of the church, you just click on the link, Catechism of the Church, find and locate the answer, the encyclopedia. So you don't need to spend 20, 10 years and think that other people, people even share this, they actually read this. And these are some of the continuous formation. I will share the links containing, and you can also, some of you already have this at your fingerprint, but I will share with those who don't have. Catholic sites, you know, what the Vatican says, because one of the major things that people are doing online presently to charismatic members is to turn them against the church and to apply areas that you are ignorant about to confuse you. Some people say the Pope has approved homosexuality. They turn things upside down. They want to use it. You can see what happened when some people even stomped the bishop's house because they were not properly catechized and to understand the structure of the church. And these are some of the things that we as charismatics, if the devil cannot get us, it will turn us against ourselves. And the house that is divided against itself cannot stand. And, the, and there are also sort of what the river that forgets its source will surely get dry. So one of the major things is I will show you some, some chaos that we also have with regards to digital evangelism and ways in which we can rectify the chaos as, uh, as charismatic members. Um, I will share the sites with you, but I just want to itemize some of the areas in which when you are thinking about sites and thinking about other things you need to take into cognizance. Well, on the, on the Google document I will share with you, you can also type in, once you have the link, you can type into it to provide us with some communities. You have links to Facebook of some community or websites so that other people can also share it. We share resources. And that's why we are together as uh, digital evangelists and uh, on, on, on this uh, ICT uh, team and, and chat room, you know. So uh, um, we have healing, we have AIDS organization and project. You can send links to some of all this that you have. I, I have updated some on that Google document. Youth ministry, marriage and families, and this Apart from sending things along this route, you can also create your own post on this. I want to be sure that all of us who are ICT reps from various adults and provinces, we put down our Facebook and social media accounts into that Google document so that others can link up with you. And that's one of the major reasons that uh, Brother Misa have this ICT group uh, for the exchange of information. He has a telegram, he has all of this. But you know, 
when you have this in a spreadsheet, others can copy and just share, even if you don't have something you want to post. And that's the, 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 the major uh, reason why we have that Google document. So let's proceed. The next thing we have to this is the Google document. I will share the link with you, and then you can make use of all the, the things that we have there. So today, I will focus on just one of the tools. There are many tools. Yesterday, uh, uh, Brother uh, Shombo Tedo taught, taught us about Excel, which is one of the tools for digital evangelists, you know, because you have to have the contacts of people that you are, and you need to also have a database, which Brother Amisa is working on. And I, I will share, make my friends to how we collectively uh, as digital evangelists have used Facebook and a lot of people who are charismatic members, priests, laity are using Facebook and methods and tips from the analytics. So the first thing is there's this, the Facebook of the International Catholic Charismatic Renewal Service. It's on this, it's on, the link is also on this, on this uh, on PowerPoint slides. This is the one for the US the National Renewal Service. This is the one, this is not exact the way it is, it's beautiful than this. I just um, call the image below, just trip the about us and then the upper region. This is a wonderful site for the CCR Nigeria developed by Brother Emmanuel Damisa. And uh, this is a very powerful uh, website. This has been the dream, uh, the standard to, to which the renewer want to raise the, 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 the website over the years. And this is what Brother Damisa has delivered and is also uh, providing content through your collaborations. Now, one of the major thing is this, that you don't, you, you may have access to post information to him because that is very important. And you also have access to also share information from the international or the hierarchical uh, body of the renewer as well as the Catholic church. But one of the major thing is you have to look at what you have to offer, what you have to give to others. You have so much to give as I've started. And I want to make, refer you to what we call multimedia. When you are providing content, trying to give people what they can see, to, uh, to go along with what they can, they can read. And if you can also add what they can hear, it will also be very important. So you can use your phone to just record the word of God that comes to your mind and anything that comes and send it. You can send it on WhatsApp, you can send it on LinkedIn. People who want it, you can send it on, on, on Instagram, you can send it on Facebook. And at other parties, what uh, we, we also write. And that, is, that one is very important. You know, when we write, we should be very careful not to lead other people astray. And that was why I started by referring you to resources that you can always uh, dwell upon. So when we look, when we talk about multimedia, it's a very holistic topic because um, you need to know how to use your camera to actually snap pictures at events so that you post. And, you know, Brother Damisa is, is currently in Ibadan. Huh? He attends national events and other events, but it can be everywhere. And that's why we have uh, reps in various parts of the country. It's interesting that when you attend your Dalsesian, your Archdiocesan or provincial event, take pictures, take pictures. Whatever you jot down, share it and post it. You know, and let other people know what is going on and ensure that any content you provide as what people can see, what people can hear and what people can write, comment on and react. And, you know, the, 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 the basic thing that you have to know that, that as digital evangelists is you have to also be conscious, am I reaching out to people? And that is one of the major things. It's just like, you know, how many souls have you won for the Lord? You know, it's not about counting souls, but it's also for you to be able to know that you are making impact. So a lot of people feel that you know, when they show the pictures of their beautiful dress or show the picture of the beautiful country that they have or show all sorts of things that, and people begin to say, ah, you are too much, oh, you are powerful. And some people will say, when I post the word of God, people will not like, people will not comment. But let me tell you, you will know that people actually go through it. And as the word of God will say that, all oh, ye that you hear the word, the word today, add not your heart. They may not write something, but it touches them. 
And I will show you evidence for that. Taking using the effort that Brother Damisa and some all other people, including myself and all other digital evangelists in Nigeria, has been doing, and then the, 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 the analytics. I'm going to show you the analytics and you will see the impact. The first thing I want to ask for is for the unity of purpose. Now, there is a tendency that you may try to have a, a digital platform for your evangelical purpose but you are not promoting God. You want to promote yourself. As one of my brothers used to say, he would say, do not work for God. Don't, let, don't use God. Let God use you. Don't use God. So some people want to use God. They actually want to gain likes. They want people to know about themselves. They want to show their beautiful clothes. And then they will just say to the glory of God, some so, so, so thing says, and you shall walk in the light. And all they are showing at the end of the day is just their shoe. All they want to show everyone. And so at the end of the day, you ask a fundamental question. Are they talking about Christ? Or some people, so most, one of the most and fundamental thing you have to take notice of is to have that sense of purpose that is not to promote yourself and to, to gain people to like you or to create your own uh, pathway towards having your own ministry. And that's one of the things that we need to have, why we need to share our, our social uh, media platforms and handles so that we'll be able to have that synergy. That synergy is a little bit lacking, and I'm going to prove that to you. Uh, the way I'm going to prove this, this is iCrest Facebook, for instance, and there is no other iCrest Facebook. If you check it on Facebook, and then you realize ICRES is an international body of charismatic all over, and they have the head office in Rome. And this is the one of US, right? And then there's the one of England, um, we are speaking from. But if you type, for instance, Kaki Charismatic Renewal of Nigeria, you are going to see numerous with varying members just from the search that I've just made now, you will see the first one private group, 6,000 6, plus members. The next one, Kaka Charismatic Ambassador, 12,000. The next one, 34,000. The next one, 122, and like that, like that. And you find out that sometimes some people create some, some of this, may not even be charismatic, but I'm going to show some, I'm going to move very fast now and show you some of this. There's this one called the Catholic Charismatic Renewal Worldwide. One of the reasons why I, I want to make allusion to them is for us to be able to help us to search for who are those in charge and how they can add these members or they can also give access to the, you, you people who are verified ICT uh, team for Charismatic to have charge so that there won't be the dispersion of fake information. And that's yesterday we were talking about some people sharing Google document. Some people are talking about this. Some people are talking about some charismatic member who are not charismatic member. People know that charismatics love that community and they can exploit that. And that's why I'm not saying this one I'm showing is exploiting, but we need to actually trace. The next one that I'm going to show, it's the currently charismatic newer of Nigeria worldwide. This one as it was actually created by Brother Edorado Teofilos uh, Ojichuku G.A. Ezeke. If you know him, please help us to inform him that he can add, he has 18, uh, what we call it, uh, what we call it, uh, admins. Some of them are priests and other people. If you can add the leadership of the renewal to this, if you know about Theophilus, please help us to tell him. He, this group has over, almost going to 100,000 members, you know, members which are charismatic. These people have joined because they are charismatic. And to your surprise, it was created in 2019. So it doesn't mean that the charismatic does not have a Facebook before that time, but it was a deliberate thing. And that's one of the major reasons why we need to synergize our effort. Uh, I'm going to post um, uh, the, the, the thing, the link, I've already placed the link in the, in the PowerPoint too. So I'm going to move very fast to um, this. Uh, after this, we have Patrick Ikeoku. He created this one. This is just Catholic Charismatic Renewal of Nigeria worldwide again. The same name with CCRN. And when members in, in various parts of the world, they go to, they just pick any of them. 
And this is one of the major reasons help us get across. He created his own tour in 2019, Patrick Kikioko. If you know him, we are a national body here. Help us look for him. Ask the admin, either they're from the art houses. This one is the oldest of the Catholic Charismatic Facebook page. It was created in 2014 and uh, led by Brother Sivanon, Sibere Chuku, Chuku Query. The national body knows about what is going and most of all these are private group in such a way that the information have been passed and how do we know whether the information from the National Executive Council and these are some of the things that and I'm saying this not to, 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 to speak ill of this but to say this is a good work they have done but let's synergize our energy and those of us who are IT city rep of the renewal now should not, not should not uh, start duplicating things and creating dynasties, but try to synergize because we have to be one. And this particular group, um, um, you can see from the admin six moderator, uh, Father Coninius Amu it has been one of the key person and he also has uh, the other pages to it and whatever, this is a private group. If they can add, then or we can add, same, these are members everywhere. This one is, this, this one has 6,000, 600 members and uh, it's a Facebook group. And um, to be honest, it was created. Uh, I created that, but when I was uh, working for the renewer, um, that should be between that 2008 to 2017. And while I was living, I, I just made brother uh, lost in the admin. That was before we had exchange with the, uh, what we call it, with the new ICT uh, manager, brother Emmanuel Damisa. And today, I know that I think it's been wrong, is but I uh, Lawson is uh, one of the, in the leadership of the new one is at the head office in Obuluku, and you can be asked to, to be added to this. But there's one that has been wrong presently and associated directly to the account of the renewer. And as you can see, this one, you can see the, the, the last past events are there, but it's not as recent as the one that Brother Amisa is running. That I also feel that we should synergize our effort to join in that. This is another one, Catholic Charismatic Ambassador. This is a very, a very good one. Most of the people who founded this are, are also they are outside the country, and some are in the country. Uh, but to be honest, it has a great analytic. That's the ambassador, and this is the, the one we are. What we are talking about now, you can even be viewing it. This is the one that Brother Amisha is uh, working on, and the one that you know that is associated to the official website of the Renewal in Nigeria, and it, it doesn't have as much members as all these other ones because it's like our members don't even know which one is which and where we should be. But I'm going to show the impact that the team, Brother Misa and his team within the short period of time have made and how as, as an institution of digital evangelism and how you can make such kind of impact too when it comes to digital evangelism. Uh, the first thing I will show is to show you page followers, you know, to show you page followers that the followers are rising. And at times they comes down, but you you you, you ask fundamental questions not to show you about this, but for you to also have an analytic of the impact you are making, as I've made mention of. And then, as you can see, that if you see the rise in in, in followership, starting from within that range of uh, what we call it, February to May, let's talk about this. Is just we are talking about this year. You can see the rise in June and the increase. And then you can see that the effort is, is coming up and things are taking place. And when I made mention of multimedia and the other side as an instantiation, you will see that when he introduced the CCRN TV, the viewers increased. And that is amazing. And then you can see on Pentecost Day in 2021, that's fifth, over 6.7 thousand people spent a long period of time devoted on that Facebook. This is an instantiation of digital evangelism. So it's not like you're posting videos or you are doing this or you are doing that too, but it's just about the impact. And this is what you can see in, 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 in an, an analytic form. And then the other part, which I also want you to take note of is, you know, when you post, how do you make the design to be? How, what do you post? If you post something beautiful, you're going to see that the participation and the outreach is going to increase because everyone won. So I'm just using this as an instance. Before this was posted, 
this one was posted and it received 1,141 uh, people reached it. But immediately this was posted and reached 11,524. And that is what one of the things we have to fight against, mediocrity. Learn to design. If you can't design, reach out. And I'm sure that seminars that are going to still take place through this uh, digital evangelism, uh, uh, um, I'm very sure that uh, Brother Amisa is going to teach graphic designing to some, apart from Excel that was taught yesterday. So there will be more graphic designing, how to use Facebook productively, how to write. It will teach on writing too so that we can really be equipped beyond measure and have greater outreach. Um, another thing I want to show you is the fact that you need to know the time of the day. And you can also know, you know, you know, you know, you can also know the gender, the country, who are the people that are engaged more. And that's one of the ways to even score your work as a rep in various parts of the country. When we realize that people in your dances are responsive, it shows that you are pointing to the effort of the national body, not that you are creating your own dynasty. And this is one of the major evidence for that. You can calculate the outreach. And you, know, you, you can see the impact that photos made, the average reach, because, so, because of the, the situation of our country. So some people may not be able to stream videos. So you can still make effort to have good graphics, you can see photo uh, reach 14,000 people, why video reach 4,000. And when you send links, people don't, we are sending link to this, link to that. Only few people engage with that. And one of the most important thing is which time of the day should I post? You have to know which time of the day. To be honest with you, the charismatic members are fully engaged. I can, be, I can say it's brother Damisa is catching the attention. And I always, as I always say, I always call him uh, a lady priest. That, like this is a mission. This is a ministry. He's not just a painting. He can, you know, he, he has his work. He has his company. But he's, he has given himself that this is what I'm going to give to the Lord. And then you see, from Monday to Saturday, throughout the week, there is always a regular number of people engaged. There are consistent people who are above seven thousand who always ensure that they are they don't miss opening the page every day. And one of the things is you have to look at the time of the day that you post. This graph here is showing the people's engagement. Between uh, 4 and 9 p.m., people are not reading anything. So you want to catch the attention, always post within that 9 a.m. to around that the, you know, morning period. It's like people flip through and late night, people flip through before they go to bed. And this is just, I use this analytics to give you insight on which time of the day should I post and how to, to make this impact. Uh, this, one, uh, is, this one was a small page created, uh, and I think it was created, I created at that time to, to just for maybe leadership or whatever within the renewer. And uh, I've heard that Misa is also the admin, but it's not really, but the thing is how this can be matched with uh, the, the current one that is going on. And uh, as you can see here, I just want to use it to show, um, to, to show the, 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 the gender and the people that we are reaching out to. Do we reach out with, from the analytics? It shows that more male you know, visit and read all this Facebook more than the females. So, and then you can see the age range of the people that, you know, when we are doing this, evangelical outreach, it can also guide you which topic will I be talking about. The young people are the majority. So if you look at from the sketch here, young men between 25 and 34 are the highest range of people that are on social media waiting to be fed with the word of God, waiting to be fed. And what have you been feeding them with? You are feeding them with what Boko Haram is doing, or you are feeding them with what empowers them to actually be able to live the life God has given them. And then you can see the elderly people, they are more, not keen to that. But, you know, this uh, analytics is also very helpful to also know what you are posting. This is just a sample of the engagement that, you know, with, with this, this taking just for a week or so, the top countries that are viewing it, Nigerians, you know, one 16 uh, plus in the rating is not by number. And then we also have the top cities that are also involved. And then you can see Abuja taking the lead in the particular page I use for the analytic. And um, 
I, 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 I put this still to there because this seems like uh, a community that was created. You can't even enter it unless the person created it and only God know what the person is feeding the membership. Um, so these are some of the things we are, before we even begin to say we are tracing fake news, before we begin to realize that all the effort we are making, some people are not turning, we need to synergize our energy, we need to, and we need to focus on how to implement some of the tips I've mentioned towards this uh, digital evangelism that we are introducing. Um, I can still count as many as possible of accounts, but I will, I will stop on this because uh, there are numerous accounts. This is another account to Catholic Charismatic New uh, uh, I think is maybe the person is also a priest, um, uh, Father Gossin and, uh, and other people. And, and uh, finally, I want to take a leap from this particular group, which I've instantiated. When you are creating your Dalsiza on Facebook, or at Dalsiza or Provincia, which you can also send a link to Brother Emmanuel because he has a web page for each diocese and provinces on the national web, web, website. Now, when you are creating the ones you are going to create or you already have, ensure that you verify the people that are coming in and ensure that you state the rules. Because I, I'll be honest with you, when, 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 I, when I started uh, the web office, uh, under the leadership of Professor Isaac, Brother Professor Isaac Okokolo, and I said we we're going to open social media, and he was very positive to technological advancement. And one of the major problems I used to have is they would call me, I, I was in Obuluku that time, I'll be called. Austin from Lagos, from Abuja and other places, somebody has posted pornography on that thing you created. Somebody has done this, somebody has done this, somebody has insulted the bishop, somebody has done that. These are some of the things you need to do. Give the people the rules ahead and try to ensure that they answer the question. I'm, I'm very sure Brother Amisa is still going to organize a session where we're going to train people on a professional use of Facebook. You create this kind of dialogue box that will be able to enable people to put in this data before you welcome them into the community. So at this point, you can ask your questions, you can raise query, but I feel that these are fundamental bases that we should put in mind towards a productive digital evangelism. Thank you so much and thank you for listening to, to my presentation. Once again, I want to um, thank you, Brother Austin. Brother Austin is a PhD student in UK. You know, when you want to say, oh, no, feli, feli, you can see what he has delivered to us. Uh, Brother Austin, you are still going to come back. You know, I will not, I will not leave you alone now. I'm not, going, I'm not going to let you go. There's so much we need to benefit from you because we are a team and this team have to work together for the benefit of the renewer in Nigeria. Like I said um, some time ago, you know, at some point I was, I was invited by different churches like top denominations in nigeria by the way i don't believe in saying these people are mushroom they are making progress more than than you think they have cable tvs they wanted to establish another one and they came to my office in the bottom here sending a senior pastor and i was at their office on lagos Ibadan, uh, lagos Ogun state expressway very big green mighty things so don't, don't let us, as Catholics, just say they are mushroom, they are mushroom. They are doing marvelous things. Let us respect them. And let us pick what we can pick from the way they evangelize and see how we can evangelize also. Um, and I saw what they wanted to do. Gigantic, very big. I gave them my office for about a week. One of my offices. I couldn't allow them to continue. They wanted to be there for a long time, pay a lot of money, but I said no. So they had to go back to um, Lagos to continue their program. Training is very important at the national level, at the diocesan level, in ordinary level and prayer group level. That is why we are bringing in people to help us. Very soon, another brother will come up but before then, let us ask one or two questions that we have um, so that our brother who is still with us can answer them. Brother Michael Obulu. 
you have a question, you can unmute yourself and speak. You can unmute yourself and speak. Okay, Brother Collins or Tali, if you have a question, you can unmute yourself and speak. Okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, my question is this. Because you know why I want to ask the question? Why I call this those who mushroom churches or whatever? My question is this, how can CCRN, which is a society in the church, be playing a role like those churches? Is it possible? Most of all those people that we call mushroom churches, they are able to do what they do because it's an entity. If not because of uh, Caris and the, the idea of Pope Francis, we are a, an, a, a unit of Catholic Church. So whatever we are going to do should be under the umbrella of Catholic Church. It will not be easy for us, but we can do something under the umbrella of Catholic Church. So, for example, the Facebook, we mentioned that Catholic Christianity worldwide. All our program is advertised there because one of the moderators was my service team member when I was in university. But before I post something, they will say they have to approve it from the general admin. So the question I want to ask, those Facebook are not official in, of CSR and Facebook, but how come they have a lot of members? They are, they are not the membership drive. They are not even directed by, by any executive or charismatic. So my question is this, how can we get our member to like our official Facebook page from the grassroots. How can we? Because Thank for you. example now. Okay. Uh, okay. So I wanted to say something. Huh? That if go ahead, go ahead, prayer please. group, go ahead, for example, brother. in Warrior Diocese, you have 96 prayer group in Warrior Diocese. Out of the 96, we will have average of 100 members. So 96 multiplied by 100 is down at 96,000. So that means only worried they all see if yeah. are going to be effective. And so prayer group may have up to 200 members. Let's say out of that 200, 60 mm -hmm. or 70 are very, very active and ESCO. Uh, if, which anomaly term my diocese that even if members are not effective, let the seven executives of each ministries in a prayer group be effective. We have 70 altogether in a prayer group alone. So sometimes when we go national program like this or there's some program, the people say, people are, our members are not, I say, I don't need members to be active. Let only the ESCO, seven elected ESCO in each ministry be active. Where, why, where, where, what will not be your other member not be active? So if we want to get Facebook Live, for example, which I already suggested is let us use our national chairman through the national assistant chairman and have a, they what they call Facebook Drive I believe me, you will have more than one million likes on our Facebook page if we do Facebook Drive for social media. Let the prayer group coordinators, the assistant coordinators, the assistant chairman know what we are doing. That will make the people around them to know. I tell you, some coordinator may not have his, uh, 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 what they call them, smartphone, as we always mentioned before. So how can they drive their member when they don't even know what is happening? But when the special comes from top, oh, okay. that the grassroots. Yes. So it will make them to like the page. You understand? Now, if all these uh, people that are not certified are having every like, like every day, increase their numbers every day. So we don't even need to merge with them. Are you getting it? Because we cannot take hold and control them. But we can make sure that all our members, present day charismatic member, under the leadership of Brother Uche Manu, can be on our page. This information will not be there anymore because we give the right content. I remember when we want to do our program, ask Brother Damisa, can we a straight line? You say I have to take approval for national chairman. I so hard I was not angry. I'm so happy. That means any content that's going to our page will be satisfied and approved by you, our leader. And approval oh, possible for oh, national okay, chairman. Okay. That is good. Oh, okay, bro. So, oh, okay. 
Brad Collins, let, let, let us let us yes, answer bro. that question because may, many people want to enjoy from that your question. Okay, brother, yes. please. Um, you have something to say about that? Yeah. Um, you see, like the apostle of Jesus who said some people are casting out demons um, in your name. And what was Jesus' response to them? Um, he made them to realize that whoever is not against us is actually for us. The, the, the thing is the CCRN is so broad and there are offices that are rotational. Now uh, the office of the, of the ICT, it's a very sensitive one. And I could remember that when brother, brother Professor Isaac Okokolo started this in 2008, he, 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 he told me something that was scary because he knows that you are having vital information and you also have a privileged position. And I could remember when I was to leave to, to out to leave the country and I said I was, and there was suggesting names of people that should take over the office. And I said, I will not hand over. It has to be a trustworthy person. It has to be an honest, it has to be somebody professional. It has to be someone that we know we can entrust our life into. Why am I saying this? In as much as I'm not condemning the people creating Facebooks because they have occupied position or they have power to control the crowd and tell them, this is the one you should join and tell them what they want to tell them and have their own empire. In as much as we cannot say they are not against God or they are not for God, we also have to know that there is a trusted platform where people can say they have the truth and authentic information from the national body. And that is why in, if they are creating, and like I said earlier on, you know these people, some of you are already identifying, beg them. You know them as priests, you know them as laity to allow at least the ICT national coordinator or rep from each diocese to join the admin team so that they'll be able to authenticate, not authority things, as well as also give our people who actually, let me tell you honestly, people go and search for CCRN and whichever one pops up is the one they click on and they believe they are part of, they're listening to the national body. So if the national body is saying, let's come to Ibuluku, and another person who, who has 98.3 says, but as also so we say that we should go, there's going to be a clash. At the same time, we have a national conference. And what I would say is your job, my brother, your job is not to look at what other churches are doing or what other channels. is what can you do to promote, to promote this unified cause. And let me be sincere with you. Uh, the CCRN is very sensitive with your information. Because yesterday I was very bitter and angry when we were talking about some things yesterday, raising some doubts about the authenticity of the people who are the chair. And in as much as you know that they're very sensitive about your information, the people that are placed in positions are not just people that are just there because of the money or because of the, but because of the sacred duty. Let's join hands together to ensure that we secure our members. I will be honest and I will play. I don't, I'm not afraid of anybody. Some people are having these pages to create their dynasty and they are doing whatever they like with our members. And our members are vulnerable because they felt they have joined CCRN group. And the thing is this, let us talk to people and authenticate them. That's just a summary to that question. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Austin. Um, let me add to what he has said. Before Dr. Collins Ugu's tenure was over, we two of us talked. You know, we talked about the fact that there are so many people claiming to be CCRN. They will, they, when they create their books, their, their pages, their groups, they will say CCRN Nigeria. It is only the national. Hello? Brother Emmanuel? It's 
So we have lost Brother Emmanuel, and I think uh, Tamisa, but we're going to, he's going to join us soon. I can see that um, the, the thing has made me uh, host. So wait, we, while we wait for him um, to join us, um, I can just take some of the few questions so that we can have others. Uh, so I can say you can unmute yourself, Brother Michael Ogulu, order. Please unmute yourself and hear your question, please. If it's not ready, Brother Collins. So I'm trying to um, unmute both. OK, thank God it's back, yeah. Look, I'm back now, praise the Lord. I was trying to post something before. Oh, yeah. Uh, just like what I'm saying, you mentioned something about the city of the Anopos. The reason why I'm saying, why I mentioned about we increasing our like is this. Uh, those people, those pages were created by individuals. Uh, if just like when we are doing our national Pentecost program, two of them, they are charismatic worldwide and the other charismatic uh, Caesarean worldwide, always post our adverts on their pages, even my dancer program. But I have to approve it. I love what they're doing. But if you find out the likes in that pages, in those pages, some of them are not even charismatic member. Are you getting it now? But what I'm suggesting is that our own like can be, we can drive our likes from our member through the prayer groups coordinator. You know, like what I privately uh, discussed with your brother Damsa one on one. We yeah, just it, talk almost one on one. Yeah, they, that, they have done that. Us, they have uh, done that. Get, they have done that because at the pamphlets of the national program, they used to put that link there, the link to authentic Facebook. On the website no. of the CCRA, where the Amisa also put that, the national leaders and the diocesan leaders were giving some of those links too. But what you can also do to summarize this is you can also, this part of your own digital evangelism, make the drive to point people to it yourself don't say what others can do. No, mm. what have, you are not getting my point. What I'm trying yeah. to say is this. Uh, let there be direct, can I, now I'll tell you the truth about charismatic, uh, yeah. is that they like hierarchy and power. Present charismatic, you cannot run away from this truth and it's truth. You know there, you are a member, you are an executive. They like hierarchy and power. Are you getting it? I remember when they asked us to collect phone numbers of coordinator. I called my national chairman, it was not available. And at the post, Brother Adam said, I said, we can get the information for police secretary or the assistant secretary, which I call her. We were selfie me. Do you know when he finally heard about it, it was mad that why was they control ICT? Why can't the national chairman tell the assistant chairman that they need number or whatever? Most, why must it be through IT? I did not complain. I know what transfer between us, which my brother Adam said, is already aware of it. That is why I did not even share this link. Nobody is coming to for this okay. for the so that we can take other questions. questions. So that we can but take other questions. Say, okay, yeah. my suggestion is, is that let national chairman through the Delsa chairman ask coordinators uh, that this is our oh. Facebook page. Let our member go and like it. Just like what I mentioned before that on that day, they still okay. Everybody bring out your smartphone, open your Facebook, search for this arrow end. This is the logo you are going to see there. Let us like it. Believe me, you, in one prayer fellowship day in that week, we have more than 60,000 likes from our members. Can you, do that yes, for, can you do that for the national Facebook page in your fellowship? Yes, I said, yes we can do that. Okay, like, please. We, have to do it. we have to do that with instruction from national chairman to the, to the chairman. Now, let me LC. tell you, let me tell you, you said the country charismatic in you are like hierarchy and protocol. When it yes. comes to ICT and thing being posted online, the power has been bestowed to Brother Emmanuel Damisa. So when he gives you the go ahead at this event, then you can do that. He has that power. You understand? Because he is occupying that seat. Mm -hmm. It's not a decoration. Is the seat yeah. to authenticate. If somebody posts anything online on that charismatic, not even me. If somebody posts it that is not reasonable, is brother that miss out that will be head responsible. If somebody is victimized under the name of the charismatic online, 
is rather the missile that we had responsible. And that is why is a is is the authority of the national body is in his hand because it's part of the framework of the national service team. And that is one thing I want you to understand that instructions you are receiving is authentic. And go ahead and do as, and, and I'm saying this not because I'm trying to praise him. I'm talking this because his office have occupied for over nine years of my life. So I know that we are the art of this, right? And know that what is passing, when you talk about the database, when you talk about this Facebook, it is the right thing to be done and the national service team is talking. Thank you. Thank God, brother. Misa is back. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, um, when, when I was offline, I, I said something. I said, thank God they are in a good hand. Uh, sorry, I was using two networks. I one got disconnected, so I have to come on my mobile phone. Now, uh, Brother Collins, I heard a part of what you said, but before I go, I go there. So I communicated with those who established Facebooks throughout Nigeria, and they refused to make me an admin. They refused to let us merge. Because these people created this Facebook to promote themselves. And what they normally promote are not the content from the national body or a particular diocesan body. You know, diocesans have the right to have their own Facebook page and groups, but they're supposed to be named as Catholic Charismatic Renewal of Nigeria, Ibadan Archdiocese. You saw the one that Bora Austin showed us that time. That one is for Ibadan. So you will know the one you are joining. But the rest, the rest of them created as if they are the national ICT, sorry, national body. And they are not national body. And when you see what they are pro uh, promoting there, they are often not content that will help our members. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And with regards to what Brother Colin said, we are a bit strict with permissions we grant and the informations that we information we post because I am directly re, uh, uh, reporting to the national body. For example, this event we are having, I took permission from the national chairman, Brother Uche Manu. Brother Uche Manu is a loving brother that once you discuss with him and you share the vision with him and he knows it is to the advantage of the renewer in Nigeria, he will allow you. Similarly, Brother Collins was like that. If you share with them the vision and the mission of the project and how it connects to the renewer, he will allow you. And in the same vein, if the ICT reps from the diocese provinces and prayer groups share with me, I will, I will put them together and share them with the national chairman and they will give approval. Once he gives approval, that goes to, that goes to um, the diocesan chairman. Then they, are, they, they, they will be aware of it. And now let me bring in this aspect. We are meant to disrupt our programs using ICT. Let me tell you how I began. I'm sorry we are taking much time, but it is very important for us because we don't have this avenue every time. I began from my prayer group. I noticed they don't have camera. They don't cover their programs. And then they don't do any ICT related things. But our prayer group coordinator was open. And then I will use my digital camera, my camcorder, and my computer. We began to work from that angle. The same thing, I went to dinner programs, and I realized they don't cover those programs, and they don't document them. I used my, my I, I was doing it. Nobody was paying me, nobody invited me. And then they liked me. I was already an intercessor and a teaching ministry uh, member, known at the prayer group level, and then dinner level. That was, they welcomed me. The dancers was having a conference. They were doing audio recording. They didn't have a video camera. I used my camcorder. And I kept doing all those things. Then they welcomed me. When it was time to, um, the national needed assistance, Brodowski was talking, the, the national assistance secretary was talking, and other people, they were mentioning my name. 
So this office is um is not an elected office. This office is um is by selection. They have to know you and what you can do. I have about 25 years of membership in the renewal. So they knew that. And I've been a leader from prayer group level till national. So all those things are put into consideration. But when everybody, any renewal member has something to offer, I mean, I mean ICT member has something to offer, I'm so open. Just, just, just discuss it and we will adopt it because what we want is progress. So why I'm saying we should disrupt our activities with ICT is that, Brother Collins, you can go ahead, make good graphics about the dinner program coming up, put it, uh, bring it up. We, we, we need content. If you look at Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, they cannot provide content by themselves. Take for instance, yesterday, I mean, sorry, that, that's why they, they depend on all of us in the world to give them content and we give them for free and they make money from it. Now, yesterday we talked about um, fake news and today I've created a website, fakenews.ng, fakenews.ng. And this is going to be a platform that will be used throughout the country and people from outside the country will even use it. And I'll be needing people to join, to help us check fake news and um, authentic news, verified news. Nobody pushed me. Brother Austin mentioned it. I took that inspiration and it has been in the public space. And we brought in Professor, uh, Professor Schenge yesterday. He, sp he spoke about it. And now that website, I have I've launched it. Now we're going to be putting content on it so that from all over the world, anything related to Nigeria, before you can believe it, you need to come to that place and verify that it is true or not. Right now, I have dummy content on the site. I just put some dummy content so that you know that um, it is it is live. So as from today, we are going to we are going to um, officially launch it with authentic news. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is Hallelujah. There are still more questions from people that we can just take if they still time. Actually, we have another another topic. Okay, okay. And uh, yes, brother. So the, the questions, we are going to compile them. Please put in your questions in the chat box or in the question area. Brother Austin is going to put these um, questions together. He will answer them. Brother Austin, we are going to add you to our Telegram group. All of us on this platform are more people on the Telegram group. Right now, we have many people also on the YouTube, they are watching us, either via CCRN.tv or on our official YouTube um, channel. So, and this video is going to be uh, available for people to continue to watch. So your questions will be answered. I've spoken to Professor Schenge from yesterday. He's already putting a document together and the document our brother shared with us, we're going to make it available to you. I've already shared one of yesterday. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, uh, so please let us um, allow our brother to um, join to, to, to take over from here. Brother Austin. Hello, Brother Austin. Hello, Brother Austin. Praise the Lord. Sorry, if brother, if brother Hillary is there, kindly kindly unmute yourself and um, and take over, please, brother Hillary. I'm currently using a mobile phone, so um, Praise the Lord. Thank you. 
Hello. Praise the Lord. Please just give us a moment to resolve this technical issue. I want to bring in the speaker for uh, the second speaker, Brother Hillary. He's going to be talking to us on evangelization. Uh, he's going to be talking to us on digital entrepreneurship development. It is a topic you cannot afford to miss. Digital entrepreneurship development. Digital entrepreneurship development. It's a topic you cannot afford to miss. You'll be talking about blogging, talking about um, content creation. Brother Austin mentioned content creation a while ago. Sorry, hello, Brother Austin. Kindly help us to promote Brother Hillary as a co-host so that he can give his teaching. Uh, hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Please, sorry for the technical issue we had. Well, that is okay. My name is Bro Hillary. I want to actually appreciate the national leadership for this opportunity and also thank our national ICT coordinator, Brother Damisa for this wonderful opportunity as well. For the want of time, we're going to go straight into business. I'll be addressing digital entrepreneurship developments, digital entrepreneurship development. So in simple English, how to make money online, simple. How to make money online, digital entrepreneurship development. 
we are so glad with the whole progress, how the whole thing went through. At least yesterday we have learned about how to use your Microsoft Excel and spreadsheets. Today now we have talked about evangel evangelization through the social, through, through the online presence. So today we're talking about how to make money. How do I make money online? Either as an individual or as a group. Now I'm going to be treating three things in this presentation. We'll look at content creation. Then we'll look at e-commerce and online marketing, exploring blogging. I'm going to spend so much time on content creation because every other thing depends on content creation, content creation. Like we just had one of the questions that was asked and an answer that came after that, that the online presence is just, is a channel, it's an empty box. It's just like a tube. So it has nothing of its own. So it's actually depending on us to feed it with things. So when we say content creation, we are saying bring, bringing things inside this empty box, bringing sections inside this vast space and making it have value that at the end of the day, you are paid for what you are bringing into this vast box. And this vast box we are talking about is the digital space. The digital space or what you call the online presence or what you call the online presence. Now let's go into content creation, content creation. Now there are three major things one can actually want to promote or put up there and we call it content. It is either a skill or a talent. A skill or a talent, it can be a service or and it can also be a product. A skill or a talent, somebody may say, okay, I'm good at talking, I can sing so well, I can dance, I can do this, I can do that. That is his skill or her own talent that she or he wants to promote. Now it can be a service. I can help you do this. I can help you do that. Now that is a service you want to promote. And also we have a product. Somebody will say, okay, we have we want to sell food, beverages, we want to sell this, we want to sell that. Now this is actually a product. So whether you're having a skill or a talent, whether you are having a service, you want to provide to people or a product you want to sell. All of these fall under content. It falls under the content. This is what you want to put into the digital space. You want to put it in the digital space. And at the end of the whole, at the end of the day, you want to have you want to have you want to be paid for such an idea you just put up. You want to be paid. Now let's talk about all you need to know on idea, what do you need to know? Let's start with the, with the basics, originality. Let's say for example, I have a skill. I want to showcase my dancing, that I can dance so well or I sing so well. And the world needs to know that I have a good voice. Now, how original are you? Because the first thing is, is it original? People actually want to look into something that is new. But okay, if it's not new, are you trying to remake something that was already done or remake something that is already in the market? Or remake something that's already in the market? Or are you trying to give a retreat? Are you trying to give a critique? Are you trying to give a critique of something that somebody has already done before? Because all of these also falls under originality. You may be coming up with a totally new idea that nobody has seen. Apart from the new idea, you may be looking at somebody's idea and trying to remix it. You may be looking at somebody's idea and you're trying to remix it. And when you're trying to remix something, that means you want to tell people what you know as a original is not as good as what I've made of it. It is a content. Or you may try to remix something you may try to remake it, or you may try to criticize it, what you call a critique. You may try to criticize something that was posted 
and I say, okay, no, I'm seeing it from a different dimension, or there are things that don't add up, and it is a context. So originality is the first thing everyone trying to create content must know. How original are you? How original? Because if it is fresh, if it is different, if it is unique, everybody will want to read it, listen to it, or watch it as the case may be. Because the content can be either text, audio, or video. When we say text is something people can just read, it's actually written. Audio is just a recorded voice. Let's say this, let's say you're not seeing my face like uh, yesterday's presentation, the first presentation yesterday was audio. It was audio. So somebody can put up a contact like that, you just hear a voice. It can be audio, it can also be video, like what you are actually witnessing right now. The second thing we have to know about the idea that you have concerning your content is your research. Now, it's good enough you have a skill, a talent, a service to deliver, or let's say a product to sell. Then the next question we are asking now is, have you done a proper research on what you're trying to put into, this, into the vast space? You want the international or the local community to come and buy a product, patronize your service, or notice your skill or talent. Have you done enough research on what you're trying to do? Because we don't just, we should not just be lazy people. We, you should put effort into what we're trying to promote. You take your time. I will quote the work of Pablo Picasso. He will say, a good work of art requires time. A good work of art requires time. So you take your time into research, put more energy in research. The, the third thing we are going to note about the idea you have is the scripts. I beg everyone that is trying to go into content creation, let it be scripted. It should be scripted. You don't just say, okay, I will just think of something. You come up today, you think of something, you come up tomorrow and as it just comes into your head. If it is not scripted, I tell you the truth. People are out there, part of their content creation is critique. They will pick what you have made and they will make a mess out of you and they will make a lot of money from what you just did. They will just rubbish you online. And I don't think we want to fall into that kind of, into that kind of categorization. So I beg us, please script your presentations. Put it in paper. If you are if you are good online, you can put it, type it on your smart device, on your mobile phone, or on your laptop or palm top, as the case may be. Just arrange it properly and acknowledge the source. Because if you are using something that is not actually originally yours, please acknowledge who said that, who wrote that, or whose work you are using. Because of a truth. People may not forgive you that you just pick up their work and you own it and make it look as if it is totally yours. Because in content creation, honestly, you can be held liable. People can sue you for all the care and just make themselves famous or make money from you. And that is fact. We can't excuse that. Now, the fourth thing we have to look about the idea we're trying to promote is now you have, you have talked about the originality, the, you have done your research, you have your scripts. Please stay constant. Stay constant. What we say con stay constant is simple. You don't come online on Monday and you tell people, okay, every Monday we'll be doing this. Then by next week, Monday, nobody is seeing you online. People begin to wonder what happened to you. You don't just disappear into oblivion. It doesn't work like that. No, it doesn't work like that. It must be constant. If you want to do it weekly, it, there should be a day in a week you set aside for such a thing to be published. If you want to do it twice a week, maybe a Monday or a Friday, keep to your timing, be constant, be regular. And if you want to make it, let's say somebody wants to actually, his content is a video you want to be sharing time after time. And I would advise you if it's going to be a series, People like it not too long, but precise and straight to the point. Not too long, but precise and straight to the point. And 
it is not advisable you exaggerate. While in a smart environment, people can go online and begin to check and type and search out everything you are trying to give them. And when they realize that you blew things out of proportion, it doesn't hold water anymore. And please, in your content, don't be windy. Let me explain to us what I mean by windy. When I say windy, you don't go on a merry-go-round trying to just say one thing or present one thing. People want it to the point, straight, brief, precise, and smart. That cuts it, and that is facts. And your content should connect. Your content should connect. If you say, for example, you want to start a cook channel on a social media, you want to start a cook channel, stay in the cook channel and continue cooking. When you are cooking today and tomorrow, you're not showing us how you sew clothes, people begin to get confused. They don't know actually what exactly you're trying to portray. Let people know that's your platform to be for this or for that. For this or for that, that is when it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense if we do that. And I would advise all content creators, master what you're trying to pass across. Master what you are trying to pass across. Let me give an example. Let's say I want to start singing. I should actually master the act of singing. I should know how to hit the right notes, how to hit, how to sing the song in a way that my audience will want to hear. Nobody wants you to come online and you don't look serious. And people begin to ask themselves, what, why did I just waste my data watching this or listening to this? Why did I open this in the first place? Because the first, if let's say it is a text, the first paragraph sells it all. If the first paragraph is not looking okay, people want to pass over it. People want to ignore it. People don't want to come and view it again. That is fact. We can't excuse that. That is very true. So we must master what we are trying to pass across because our advice us, please rehearse your content. If it's an audio or a video, rehearse it. If it's a text, proofread it. If it's a text, proofread your content. At times it's good that you give it to somebody to look at it and say, okay, I have typed this in. What else can you see in it? And the person says, okay, you know, this is not proper. Remove this and remove that. This cannot work. Or if it's an audio, it's not bad for you to have a pre-recorded session, a pre-recorded session. You look at it, you listen to yourself, listen to how you sound. Does it really make sense? Because if you are put in the audience shoe, you really want to listen to yourself speak. This is one thing we must consider. This is one thing we must consider. Rehearse everything, be it video, be it audio, and if it is a text, please proofread it. Please proofread it. And in content creation, the online space is very, 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 very voracious. Because on the online space, people will not forgive you. People wouldn't forgive you. Because the easiest place to get attacked and insulted is online space. So please mind your language. Mind your language. Choose the right words. Use words you are good with and words you are very sure of. Your tune, you must not be too loud or or too, too, uh, or too shallow. When people struggle to hear you, if it's an audio or a video, or people are trying to adjust the volume of their speakers because you are too loud, it becomes a problem. Yes, your tune and your pitch, how fast do you talk? How slow do you talk? All of these things matter. So when you mind your language, people will want to actually view again and again. We are children of God, of course. We will not be actually speaking anyhow as if we are not educated people, as if we are not been touched by the Holy Spirit. 
Now, I would like to reverse what I just said so I can go into the next. I actually started by saying digital entrepreneurship in simple English, digital way of making money, digital way of making money. Why I say we'll be stressing on content creation, e-commerce and online marketing, and exploring blogging, exploring blogging. Then I started by saying content creation. And what do we mean? We had a good definition of that. They went into the idea that there are three things that matters in content is either you're trying to bring up a skill or a talent, either you're trying to promote a service, or you're trying to sell a product. All of this is content. All of this is content. Then we now talked about, okay, let's dig into this idea you have. How original are you? How original? Is it fresh? Is it something somebody has not had before? Are you so creative that you want to put up something that people have not seen? Then we said, okay, are you trying to do a remix? Is it a remix you're trying to bring to people's table? Yes, is it a remix? Or are you trying to remix something? Or are you trying to just leech on somebody's work and do a total critique on it? That also is content. That also is content. It shows originality. It sh shows how unique your work is, be it video, audio, or text. Then we said, okay, make a proper research. Make a proper research because you are online. You are in the digital space. People will take time to record. People will take time to go through what you have presented and they will actually go and dig in to actually verify if what you're saying is authentic, if it is true, if it's just callous, if you did your homework well, all these things matter. All the things matter. Then advise us, script your presentation. Script your presentation. Yes, don't just come and just say anything as it is in your head. It doesn't work. It does not cut it. It does not work like that. Let it be well scripted. When you put it in a script, you know what you're delivering on week one. You know what you're delivering on week two. You know what you're trying to put on week three and all other weeks. And for those that do it daily, follow that same pattern. Please script your work. Script your work. Acknowledge whatever work you are quoting. Acknowledge it. You don't just come and make it look as if the whole thing just fell from heaven. No, 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 no. If you're actually quoting somebody, acknowledge it because it is respect. We cannot actually overemphasize that. We don't say, okay, please rehearse. Please and please rehearse. Should it be a text? Go through it again and again. Let a second party or a third look at it. Yes, look at it and check for all the grammatical errors and all of that. Let you learn how to cross your teeth and dot your eyes. She will get text. If it's an audio, our, our personal advice, it should be pre-recorded. Pre-record, you can delete again and again and again and again and again till you get it right. Till you get it right. Yes, if it's, an, if it's a video, you can edit your video as well. So it can come out well. And of course, stay constant. Stay constant. If you say that I'll be available every Monday, please be available every Monday. If you tell people I'll be available on a Monday, a Wednesday, and a Saturday, please do it Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Do it like that because people will come back again and again just for that. Just for that. And of course, be precise. Because all of me, I want to give us a story about being constant. A story was told of a young dancer. This young dancer has spent his life earnings perfecting dance, perfecting dance. So on a day two of presentation, he has shared his flyers to the entire village. And I said, yes, I'm going to show you people my dancing skill. Come and watch for free. Then on that day, he brought all the gadgets and put his stage to actually project his dancing skill. And to his shock, only one girl was seated in the audience. Then he waited and waited for 30 minutes and nobody showed up. He said, anyway, I have paid the instrumentalists, I have paid the props, let's do this. 
and he gave it his best shot. After he finished, the girl stood up, she clapped, she took a bow with the dancer, she collected the flyer and she left. He went back home and he was sad, asking himself, what, 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 what stupidity is this? What mess have I made of myself? Then in seven days time, he got a phone call and it was a very wealthy man. And the wealthy man said, my daughter has been looking for a dance teacher all her life and she has not seen the perfect one, but she attended your dance section and she loved it. Please, can you come and teach dance for a contract? And that's why he was signed for a whole year. So when we stay constant, if we refuse to give up the dream, you can never tell, that is true. You can never tell and be precise, be precise. Do not exaggerate. Don't be windy. Straight to the point. Straight to the point. People want to listen again and again and again. Of course. And it should connect. Should it be a service? It should connect. Connect with the people. Let it be relevant. Is this something they really need? Is this something that is peculiar to the environment? When you bring up an idea that actually doesn't work, in our side of the planet, you might, and you're trying to sell to Nigerian audience, you will have a very big problem for people to hit the like button. That is very true. That is very, very, very true. Master what you're trying to pass across. Master what you're trying to pass across. Don't come to the digital space and you look like a joke. When you look like a joke, people can easily tell that you're a joker. And when they know you're a joker, they will not spare you. They will tear you into shreds. That is fact, be it an individual or a group project. Mind your language, mind your language. Pick the right words. Don't use very ambiguous words because you just want to blow people's heads away. Because at the end of the day, you may find a problem in explaining it. Be simple. Because in my words, I will say, a professor is not a professor unless he can able to take his high ideas to the woman in the streets and break it down to her understanding. That makes him a professor. So mind your language, that matters. Now let's discuss technicalities. Technicalities. Now, okay, we have understood all you need to do to create contents and all of that. Now technicalities, let's start with the device you are using. Should you be using a a smartphone, let's say you don't have that. I, I will actually recommend you use an iPhone, okay? I don't have an iPhone, no problem. I am using an Android device. Please, picture resolution is key for those that want to do video presentation or picture presentation. The picture resolution is key. I will personally recommend that you use an Android device that had, has an A1 camera an A1 camera, because your picture resolution comes out crisp, it comes out clear, it gives you all the details you're trying to capture. You will need that, you will need that for your picture quality. Should you be doing, should you be doing a, a video or a picture presentation, have a good camera. Now sound check, sound check. Don't use a microphone you have not tried before. Don't use a microphone you have not tried before, especially if you have not used it during rehearsal. Make sure your sound is okay. Make sure your sound is okay. If it's a live presentation, you can, if you are, our advice, if you are trying to do a pre-recording, you can put your phone on air, airplane mode. You can put it on airplane mode so you can hinder calls that come in and text messages. And you can have it on, you can have the whole thing running smoothly. You can have it on smoothly and have a, a beautiful presentation. Should it be audio or video? Maybe you're trying to get it on audio or video. Put it on airplane mode. Just turn your phone on airplane mode. It will help you a lot. It can help you a lot. Or if your phone has the ability, you can actually um, disconnect it from receiving calls. So calls don't come in and you can work perfectly with your smartphone. Now, background noise, background noise. Nothing is as embarrassing that you are trying to have a presentation, be it audio or video, and background noise is stealing the show. 
it is terrible. It is so bad. I will really, really advise that you may not have the best of devices that you kill background noise, but choose a location that can hide background noise. Choose a location that can hide background noise that people don't get to hear of all the dogs barking at the background, all the, the traffic and all of that, because the attention should be you making the presentation and not the distraction behind. Yes, kill that as well. You can do that also with the airplane mode, that is true. And you can go to a noiseless zone. It helps a lot, it helps a lot. Now let's go to lightning. Let's go to lightning. I am actually doing a video presentation. Lightning is key. Oh yes, lightning is key. Because whether you're focusing on yourself or focusing on the product or focusing on the skill or the talent, even if you're not focusing on yourself, please, lightning is key. Let it be bright. Let people be able to see what you want them to see. Because what you are seeing with your eyes may not be so perfect on your phone alone. You might need to have extra light. It, it enhances the viewer's perspective. It enhances the viewer's perspective. So please, you need to get that right. You need to get that right. Now, are you doing a text presentation? Maybe it's a text. Our advice, avoid this unnecessary deprivation on your text. Because at times we, we type it in a, in a system and want to transfer it to another device. And at the end of the day, you realize that device may not be able to interpret those special characters you imported just to make it look so glamorous. Stick to the basics, stick to the basics. Let it be bold. Anywhere you want to be bold, underlined or in capital letters, let it be so clear. Let it be so clear. Let the paragraphs be well spaced. It comes out well. And you know, of course, when you're placing something on screen, don't put too many things at once. Especially if the, the screen is moving, don't put too many things at once. People don't read that. They will miss the juice. Our advice, you don't place more than seven lines on a single screen. Yes, more than seven lines. Only if it's a, it's, 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 it's a, it's a document you want people to read at their convenience. But if it's a slide, don't, don't put plenty things. People may not actually catch up with that if you're trying to do that kind of presentation because you're selling a content. You want people to follow you on that content. Yes, you're selling that. That is true. We cannot actually ignore that. Now, of course, let's look at glitches. What are glitches? These are these zap sounds you hear when one is making an audio or video presentation. It interferes with the voice or picture quality. It interferes with the voice or picture quality or even video quality. Now, how can we avoid these glitches? Are you using an earphone? Don't be walking around with this because at times when it dangles, when it dangles, you have that problem, you have a glitch. Or when you leave, um, let me say notifications on, people can hear that at the background. If you hear that at the background, yes, when you're trying to do a visual or a video content, especially if it's pre-recorded, if it's pre-recorded, like an advice at the beginning, put your phone on flight mode. If you cannot do that, just stop calls from coming in and all of that, and that will settle it. It will stop the glitch and you have a wonderful presentation. Yes, it will stop the glitch. Now, the background and, your, and the picture view, the background and the picture view, your background matters a lot. You don't know how far your video or picture presentation will go. Your video or picture content, you don't know how far. Let's say you have a group in your fellowship and they, let's say it's a youth group and they are very good dancers and you want to sell it to the world. You want to sell what they do, yes, to the world. They, they, they dance to, to gospel music and they have learned how to convert their energy into godly passion. And you want to, people to see that and say, okay, this is how we can engage the youth. No problem, no problem. But background matters a lot. 
because it's not just everywhere you must capture that video. It must be in a place that allows you to have a perfect view, a perfect view, a perfect angle of coverage. And you have a wonderful work. You have a wonderful work. Of course, costume. Costume, costume. I will have to stress this part, especially for those that do picture or video presentation. Costume. Let's say you want to actually showcase to the world your cooking abilities. You don't jump into the kitchen and you're wearing a three-piece suit. It doesn't make sense. Especially if you're the cook, it doesn't make sense because that is an overkill. Your costume should actually represent the profession you're trying to promote. Get your costumes right. Get your costumes right. Of course, get your costumes right. It cannot be advertising, a, a, let's say, a, a towels cleaner, uh, how to clean your bathroom towels, and you're walking in there with high heels. It's not realistic. It doesn't, it, it doesn't cut it. It is just an exaggeration. People don't do that. Because they're just telling people, okay, if you try this, you're going to break your head in your houses. And that is not professional. Let's actually respect the profession. Let's respect the profession. Because remember, when you create content and you, you now bring it to the social media space, let's use, like, let's say, YouTube, and you put your video on YouTube, by the time you are hitting out a hundred subscribers, you are paid. You begin to get paid for what you are doing. Oh, yes. And by the time your subscribers have doubled, tripled, people will want to actually know what you are doing and advertise their product through your channel. Yes. You now realize that people are paying you just to advertise to you because you are now popular. And that is why you should not actually reject, uh, let's say, friend requests, be it on Facebook, be it on, 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 your, on your WhatsApp, save all numbers, beg them to save your number as well so that they can view a status. If you are using that to actually sell your content, if you are using that to sell your content, please do that because the more people view this, the better for you. The more people subscribe, the better for you. You'll be making money. Yes, this does have income. You don't stress yourself, your money work. You, things just work for you. You're just paid royalty. Money just hits your account just because of a content you had. And this is very, very key. And of course, please, you have to learn to beg. And a pigeon proverb says, person not the shame for where in the work. Person you know the shame for that person in the work. You will learn to beg. Beg family, beg friends, beg people that I posted this thing on YouTube, for, for example. I posted something on Facebook. Please like it. I posted something on YouTube. Please subscribe. Hit the subscribe button and tell somebody about it. You can share the link with them. Yes, you can share the link in them. When you beg, when you beg, and people see that you're humble and they see that you're simple, they will follow you. But when you sit in your high horse and you try to tell people, if you like it, do the needful. Everybody ignores you and say you're not serious. Of course, nobody wants to actually work with a proud person. No matter how sweet you look, nobody wants to work with a proud person. So beg, 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 keep begging, keep begging promote yourself and to go a long way. And of course, keep tagging. As many people that you have added as, you know, let's, let, let me use Facebook, for example. Tag and tag and tag. You can tag 50 at a go, tag another 50, tag again. Just keep tagging. Whether you like it or not, in every 50 you tag, let's say five persons are interested, you are going somewhere and you're already selling. People can reach out to you. Now, I spend so much time on content creation because when we come to e-commerce, online marketing, exploring blogging, everything depends on content. Everything depends on content because everything I've mentioned in content can apply to online marketing. Yes, because now you want to sell your goods, you want to sell your services, you want to sell your skill, you want to sell, you can use the social media platform. That is workable. And please put a reachable contact. Don't give a number that you hardly use. Their number that you know that is always available. Like some people have two phones, the small phone and the smartphone. 
Give them that small phone that you know that the battery will hardly run out. Give them that. Give them an email and always check your mail. Always check your mail. Do that always. Check your mail. Check it. Give them addresses they can reach you. If you're having a shop, no problem. It should be perfectly described. People should not have one very big work because they are trying to connect to you. It doesn't spell well. People want to know more. People want to transact business with you. And this is the basics on e-commerce and online marketing. Yes, e-commerce and online marketing. That you can be where you are. You can sell everything you want to sell without actually going to the location. You mustn't change where you are. You can sell a whole truckload without even moving from your base. All you need to do, this is my address. Where is your address? You make your phone calls, you show pictures, you show videos as the case may be, audios as it may be, your contact is reachable and voila, they get what they want. They get what they want, timely as you have promised. And tomorrow they want to do business with you again and again and again then you see you are making for yourself cool money without breaking a sweat. Cool money without breaking a sweat. And of course, if you're on social media and you have gotten a lot of people to like or subscribe to your page, please read their comments. I beg you, the consumer or the customer is king. Check their comments because you can't be your own judge in your own case. Check what they say about you. Check what they say about your presentation. Check what they are actually asking for and give it to them. Give it to them. Yes, give it to them. Because at the end of the day, you are happy. They are happy. Everybody is happy. And you just become a digital entrepreneur. You just, you just sit at your home and the money is just coming from this account, coming from that account. And you just, at the point, you just say, ah, this money is used for this, this money is used for that. And everybody is happy because we also need money actually to promote the gospel. Definitely, you needed money. Even Jesus had a treasurer in their team. That is also true. And of course, it is a competition out there. It is a competition out there. Better yourself better yourself the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement please better yourself because it is a dog eat dog people are ready to look at what you have done and they want to better you they want to overtake you so you can't just cross your fingers you can't just cross your fingers and just relax Keep hitting it. Keep getting better and better. Let people see that you are unique. Let people see you are different. And let people see that you are on top of your game. And I tell you the truth, you're creating a brand for yourself. So I just, like I said at the beginning, we took so much time on content creation because e-commerce, online marketing, and also blogging all depend on content. Because a blog is like a mini website where you begin to write or you begin to send videos or posts and people begin to look at it and watch your pictures and say, oh, I love this, I love that. And you're creating presence, you're creating presence. And the more you make a lot of people visit your blog, the more you're creating presence. And one day you'll you, be you, like a surprise. You begin to get phone ins. People call you and say, oh, I just saw this. I just saw that. Please, can we do this together? So let me just revise what we have done. I may not actually say everything. Like I say in digital entrepreneurship development, no content creation. And the ideas are three, a skill or a talent, services or products. That will say, okay, let's talk about all you need to know on your idea, be original. And your originality, you can either be a remix, a remake or a critique or something totally fresh on the table. Do your research, do it well. Script your work, script your presentation. Acknowledge all your sources or else you face the risk. Acknowledge your sources. Rehearse, please take your time to rehearse. It matters a lot, rehearse. Stay constant, 
when you say I will do Monday and Friday, please stay constant. Do not break. Do not break. Okay. And if you should break for any reason, please apologize. Don't say nobody noticed. By the way, just five persons. Apologize because you need those people tomorrow. Apologize, of course. And if it's a series, please let it be short, precise, to the point. Yes, don't exaggerate, don't be windy because it does not cut it. And let you connect with your audience. Don't bring something that is very strange to this environment. People may throw everything into the trash can even before they start going through it. Master what you're trying to say. Don't look like a joke. Mind your language. Choose your languages well. Choose your, let your tune not be too high, not be too low. Let your pitch not be too fast or too slow. It matters a lot. And on technicalities, of course, use a device that has a good camera or picture quality. Picture quality and resolution is good for visual content. It is very, very key for visual content. Sound check, that is good. Background noise, lightning, glitches, background picture, your costume, save numbers, and please tell them to save yours as well. And at times it's good to do it in your presence. This is my number, your exchange number. Make sure that I've saved it. What did you save it as? It's good. The person can see what you are doing and can easily reach to you, especially for those that want to use the WhatsApp platform, the WhatsApp or the Telegram platform. If you want to do it on WhatsApp or Telegram, please do that. It will help a lot. Definitely, it will help. Save the numbers and make sure they save yours. Beg, 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 beg. Don't be ashamed. Don't be too big. Nobody's too big. Beg. You need to beg. Be humble. Beg, beg, beg. It's necessary. Keep tagging. Do not stop. Keep tagging. Check, check the feedback page. Check the feedback check page. What are your clients saying? What are they saying? What do they want? What are they criticizing? What are they actually stressing on? Please read it. Check your mails. It is important. Give addresses that work. Give phone that is reachable. Give a phone number that is reachable. And remember, it is a competition out here. It is actually a dog eat dog. So you have no other option than to keep better in yourself. You have no option that you get better on yourself. Thank you so much for your time. My name is Hilary, just as our moderator of earlier said at the beginning. So we can now give them for questions, if there's any. Are there questions? Are there questions? Questions, please. Questions? Are there questions, please? If there are any questions, we would like to answer them. Sorry, uh, Brother Hillary, I'm trying to share your screen. Okay. If there are questions, please, who would like to actually answer the questions? 
please, if you have questions, um, let us ask our questions. We are sorry again. We are beyond. Um, we, are, we are behind time, mm -hmm. but um, this is worth it. I can see the content from the chat session. Uh, people are really happy. Another uh, YouTube and other places. People are happy because this is an eye opener for some of us. Um, so if you have questions, I know it's, I know it was straightforward. Brother Hillary is a great teacher. It's not throughout the province and throughout um, TCR reign. And he has brought his teaching prowess to, to the digital entrepreneurship that he has just talked talk, talk to us about. You know, uh, Brother Hillary said something that affected me. Some weeks ago, in my neighborhood here in Bodija, Ibadan, there was a Nollywood um, actor and some of his colleagues, they were in a particular uh, place in that neighborhood. I was driving through and when I saw him, you know, a very, a very popular person, I saw, I saw big movies and then top movies. Then I stopped and I requested to take a picture with him. He was calm. I took the picture. He wanted to know more about me, but I was just in a hurry to go. I didn't, I didn't give him my phone. He, uh, I didn't collect his phone number to share contact with him. And eventually, when I got home, I felt, wow, that was a bad one. I shared it on my status. Everybody was asking, oh, wow, this is great, this is great. But I would have needed him to help me to promote one of my platforms. You know? And he wanted to know more about me. I was coming from an evening mass, and I just didn't bother to collect it. So like he said, when you have an opportunity to get to, to exchange contacts, don't, don't be reluctant. I was at Asso Rock um, a few years ago, you know, where with ministers, the president was there, we had an event. I was, I was, I just took my picture at the banquet hall. You know, I was with my, I stood, I, I had my friends to snap with ministers. Peter Obi was there. I could have just taken a picture with him. I, I, I was snapping him and snapping other ministers. We were, we were together, we are, the rest of them, you know, and I, I didn't take a picture with any one of them. Um, eventually I felt, wow, I think I should have done that. You know, so you might, and these are good for content. You might be somewhere you need to take pictures. You need to exchange a contact. Don't hesitate because when you're in such a place, everybody is like the same. For you to have gained access to such a place, it means you are a noble person and respected. So they will be willing to share with you. I'm just trying to share from my experience in addition to what brother good. Hillary has said. Uh, any questions, please, you can raise your hand. Otherwise, we can uh, move ahead. Okay, brother Gabriel, you just posted your question. Brother Gabriel, you can unmute yourself and speak. Okay, brother. I can't see Brother Gabriel. I can't, I can't see him. But, but somebody asked a question, Brother Gabriel Ajayi. He said, okay. Brother Hillary, can we actually have an account link to our posts to make money? Uh, another person asked a question. Um, Brother Hillary, thanks for the lecture. Please, how can we create account link to make money from our content creation? Okay, I think the whole those two questions are just the same. Mm. It's just it's the same side of a coin. The number one about link, it depends on what you're using. Okay, let's say you are posting something, you want to uh, uh, sell your product services, let's say through YouTube. Through YouTube. First, you have to actually post the video. You have to post the video. Once you post the video, you see the button where it says share link share link so when you share the link you can share it either let's say to whatsapp facebook uh, as a case may be then people see that link that you have shared all they have to do is to click on the link and usually it appears in blue the link appears in blue so all they have to do is to click on that link that has been shared and they, you can share it to as many people as possible 
And as long as immediately the visit that site, when's the visit that content of yours, it is actually counted in your favor. Five visited, 15 visited, 20 visited, and it's going up. I can see Sister Zita Emefele is raising her hand as well. Okay, yes. Sister Zita, you can mute yourself now and ask your question. Sorry, um, unmute yourself. Sister Zita, please unmute yourself. Now you have the floor, Sister Zita. You can ask your question. Thank you very much. I want to appreciate our brother Hilary for a wonderful presentation. And uh, I also want to just add that um, when we create content, uh, we need to also edit the content to make it more presentable. There are video editing tools that we can use or we can get professionals to edit those content. Sometimes when we create content, maybe using our mobile phones, it may not be very good to put it online. Um, that's just what I want to add to this presentation. Thank you very much, Boda Ileri, for this presentation. Thank you, Sister Zita. Any other question? Oh, Brailari, we can move on because of time. Okay. Thank you so much, Brother Danisa. Um, I want to thank everyone for taking out time to be part of this two days um, virtual training. It was the first uh, of its kind. And you can expect so much more. We are going to have these kind of sessions periodically. Uh, I will still request for, for uh, permission from our national chairman, who is a progressive uh, chairman, but I do not mean APC. I mean somebody who desires to uh, progress and he wants this area to move forward. So um, we are going to be having it periodically. There is a lot to learn and we have real quality uh, resources to share with you from our brothers and sisters. And um, as we draw uh, the cutting on this edition of our virtual training. I want to thank all the resource persons that have been available, that have made themselves available to uh, grace this occasion. Uh, brother Professor Schengen, uh, Dr. Emmanuel Songotayo, Brother Austin, <laughs> and uh, Brother Hilary Irogulen. I want to thank the national chairman in a special way because without him, this would have been a success. And um, to thank all participants, the Dasan uh, ICT representatives. They have been working behind scenes. They are my backbone. You know, I talk to them always and tell them they are my backbone. You know, at times I'm so, so hard on them because I know that I need them so much. And because of how much I need them, that I'm that tough. And, but without you, um, there's no me. I thank you so much. I love you. We pray that God will move us forward. And before we go, let me share with you that um, the CCRN is launching a cable television and radio station. I know I have not shared this with you before. Um, we are going to launch our cable TV and radio station very soon. So we are working hard towards that. The committee has been set up to actualize this. Let us continue to work together to achieve this goal. The ICT unit is so important to the media team and the representatives are the backbone that I have to work with. So when I call on you at any point in time, kindly give me your attention and your support. 
May God continue to grant us success in the work of our hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, uh, please let us share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ. the love of God, love of God. The sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, thank you so much.